ProWrestlingSheet.com. What's up, guys? Ryan Satin here with ProWrestlingSheet.com. We got a special interview today with the one, the only Natalie Eva Marie. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. This is amazing. I have to say, like, uh, I love it. I'm surrounded by myself. So. <laughs> I tried to transition, you know, from red to purple. You yeah, know? I got both of them in amazing. there. Amazing. I love it. Is it weird having purple hair now from the red? I mean, you like having you. You've had such extreme hairstyles both times. No, I know. I am like the hair junkie over here. Um, <laughs> it is weird, like seeing. A picture with red I'm not kidding you I have this like feeling in me that I think all red everything has to come back interesting I know yeah uh, Christian mentioned that you said something about that on Collider live and I was yeah. like oh wow I know because well, you left okay so it's been like a little over a year yes. since you've been gone now yes. right uh-huh how has it been since you've been gone? Like, what's, you know, have you enjoyed being away from it for a little while? Um, it's been absolutely amazing. I mean, so I have a brand new show on Podcast One, the Natalie Eva Marie show that I co host with my husband, which is amazing because I get to sit down with people and they just get to talk to me about their expertise in whatever field that it is that they do. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have my movie out that you can see, Inconceivable. Um, have you watched it yet? I have not, oh. but I do want to ask you about it because <laughs> yes. I have questions okay. about working with Nicolas yes. Cage. Like, what is that like? Um, it was amazing. So I went in with pretty much just like, okay, I'm going to be a sponge, basically just like wrestling. You know, I'm this new kid on the block and I'm going in there with, okay, these are all, I mean, you have Faye Dunaway, Nicolas Cage, Gina Gershon, Nikki Whelan. These guys are Academy Award winners, you know? So I'm like, okay, go in there, be a sponge and learn from these guys. And you hear all these stories about Nick Cage, so I wasn't sure what to expect, but he was super cool. Like he was a, a major WWE fan and he FaceTimed his wife and put his son on because his son is a, a super fan. So that was like a really surreal experience because I'm like, dude, he's Nick Cage. And I'm like FaceTiming his son being like, hi, what's up? You know, he's like, I'm on set with Eva Marie. I'm like, this is crazy, you know? So he was, my experience with him was amazing. I, I just, Nick Cage is one of those celebrities that fascinates me. Yeah. When I was at TMZ and I worked there, I there was a few stories I did there that like they're probably my favorite stories that I ever did at TMZ and they're not like anything salacious or anything like that. Yeah. Like there was one time where I, one of my first stories I did there where he pre-bought like this giant tomb to where he's gonna like what, for when he dies basically. He bought this Stop giant it. tomb. No, it's crazy. It's in New Orleans and it's huge. It's like this, like the kind you like walk into, it's this huge giant thing. And I remember like my mom was on a tour in New Orleans and so much like, oh, Nic Nicolas Cage bought that. And she told me and I was like, what? So I worked on it and I was able to confirm it. Yeah, no he's got this, way. this giant tomb thing for when he dies. Yeah, he's an interesting dude. That's amazing. <laughs> I mean, that's creepy, but um, that's crazy. He also was one time where he was at the, where he was at the grocery store and he had two pairs of sunglasses on. And it's one of those questions that will forever haunt me of why he was wearing two pairs of sunglasses at the same like time. Like on top of each other? I think I think so. <laughs> yeah, like, wow. Like, it was, see, Nicholas Cage, <laughs> double sunglasses. It was one of my favorite things because I was like, why does he have two pairs of sunglasses? Oh yeah, no. He had he had them both around his oops. He had them both around his neck. But I don't know why you'd need two pairs of sunglasses. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> I've heard like m tons of stories about about him, so I'm not surprised. But nothing weird. Like I'm not like I'm asking you like uncover secrets here. Yeah, but there of wasn't course. anything like like kooky or anything. No, like, really. Yeah, it was I, disappointing. I, would I think. know. I was actually really disappointed because I thought like, and I had a couple scenes with him, so I was really excited because I was hoping for like some crazy moment, but there wasn't. And I'm like, oh my god, how disappointing. I can't really report anything back to my family because he was super just like a normal cool dude that is really I, I, I hate to say that it is disappointing i know Not on my end like i want some scoop, maybe just maybe like, he just kept it together though <laughs> because it was like really just a very quick moment of our scenes so maybe he just kept it together and stayed in scene when you say like you're taking everything in like a sponge yeah. and acting and stuff does it remind you when you first got into wrestling because you were you know you were just kind of catapulted in there. Totally. You know, a lot of times everyone goes to NXT now and there's, or work a, there's on a different the indie, path. Yeah. Or work on the indies. I mean, you were really like, you came in for, for the, the, you know, the open call or whatever, yeah. and then they just threw you out there. Does this feel similar? Uh, for sure. I mean, it's quite similar because you have, you know, all of these, you know, seasoned actors and actresses, and then, you know, wrestling, you had all these guys that were putting in, you know, years of work on their craft and, then here I come, my first day on the job was WrestleMania in New York. And I'm That's like, crazy. hey guys, what's up? I'm here. Um, so it's definitely something like that, but I feel like in at least the experience that I have had in 
the movie space is everybody was a lot more welcoming to me, (laughs) you know, um, (laughs) as opposed to wrestling. And I understand it it a little bit differently because obviously wrestling, it's, it's a sport. It's so different. You're like, everyone's competing for TV time, storylines in the movie. Everyone's already cast their part. Totally. So there's a big difference there. So I understand why it would be a little bit more welcoming on that end of the spectrum as opposed to wrestling. Well, because in wrestling, there's only so much time on the television show. And if you're taking it away from people who have been there for a long time, they're obviously going to be frustrated with you. For sure. And when I walked in, you know, we were still called Divas at the time. And there is literally only maybe one segment. And it would be like two minutes. So where the progression has from when I walked in to where it is now is phenomenal. I mean, they have evolution coming up and that's a whole pay-per-view just for the women. So, I mean, for everybody that's in the locker room right now, just to take a step back and really look how far it has come is, is truly amazing. It's crazy. I mean, even... Even from now to a year ago, or a little over a year ago, when you left, has there's oh my so gosh. many things that have happened since. Totally. I mean, you have these girls that are like, you know, main eventing segments that were never even a thought. Like, no way. And to see where they have just really progressed is, is pretty crazy. With, you know, you mentioned Evolution. Yeah. There's that Battle Royal that's going to sure. be in it. Is that something? And then you also mentioned the comeback thing. Is that sure, something sure, that sure. you'd like to be a part of? I know it's, you know, a week away, yeah. but... Um, Definitely, this isn't like a, you heard it first right now. <laughs> um, but sure, there's there's something that is in me that will, like I feel like I do have like unfinished business there because um, you know, ultimately I everybody I think, it'd be silly if you didn't say this, but you know, you want the title. Of course. Like you, you want that championship. So, and I feel right when I left, I was just about to arrive. And so that is something that is still in me. Um, No, I will not be appearing at Evolution, (laughs) but that doesn't say that I won't be appearing later on. No, totally. I mean, I I couldn't agree with you more. You know, I, I'm a Total Divas fan. Like I watched Total Divas from the beginning. So, you know, That's I, right. <laughs> I've, I've always been a big fan of the yeah. show. Um, I like the Bella Twins a lot. So yeah. I was obviously, you know, someone that watched from the beginning. Sure. And so, you know, people like you, uh, Naomi, yeah. are people that I definitely came to enjoy because of, of Total Divas yeah. and stuff. So I, you know, I saw the backlash you always got though sure. the whole time. I mean, it's, there's no, it's no secret out there that, yeah. that there was people that, you know, criticized you saying 100%. you just wanted the fame, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Um, is that partly why you feel like you have unfinished business as well? Like you kind of want to show them that wrestling is something you care about? Um, I, honestly, I think it's just for myself. Mm-hmm. I mean, if anything, it really uh, helped my character out that the fans hated me so much because it just really established my heel character. And looking back on it, I'm so like, oh my God, this was amazing because to this day, I feel like they need All Red Everything to come back and spice things up. You know, I think that I was such a crazy heel that people just, especially towards the end after I, you know, asked Vince if I could go back to NXT and really work on my craft and and do something because I'm such a perfectionist that I really wanted to feel the best that I possibly could be from promos to wrestling to anything so that when I, you know, get a segment that I'm putting forth the best that I can be and give ultimately it's entertainment. So I want the crowd to be super into the segment as well. And I feel like when I asked Vince, Hey, you know what? Can I go back to NXT? I rolled the dice big time because he said yes, but then he also let me know that, okay, you might not get called back up, you Mm -hmm. know? So when it came time for me, uh, you know, that whole, if you're going to be on raw or SmackDown, it was very like a sweaty moment because I was like, (laughs) Oh my God, I hope I do get called back because if I don't, then, you know, obviously, um, things didn't go the way that I had planned, but I love the fact of where my character was evolving, you know, with the robe and just like my gear and everything was really kind of coming together. So that's why I feel like I have unfinished business. Well, there, it's, it's, there's, there's no question that your character right at the end, like the, the announcer, oh, all that right. was, was, was not only the best character that you had on the show, you know, in WWE, yeah, for sure. um, but I think it was the first time where some of the people who maybe were uh, not fans of yeah. yours were kind of turning a little bit like, oh, this is cool. Like, I kind of like this is a fun yeah. gimmick. Yeah. Who, who was behind all that? Like where, like, where did that come from? Is that something that you had any input into? So when um, I went back to NXT and then when I was back home going back and forth from Performance Center and then living in Orange County, I was training with Brian Kendrick, which yeah. is he is, shout out Brian Kendrick, because he is freaking amazing. The man. He, I mean, he is the man. And his creative brain is just, like, on another level. Um, so, for, he had my whole, like, kind of gear 
he helped me with my robe and everything like that. I mean, his wife made my robe. So oh, shout awesome. out to her. Um, and I had a white one that I never even, or no, no, I had a black one that was amazing that I have not been able to show. Um, but there's time. So yeah, there, time. there is time. Um, but then it was Vince. Vince made the call to have my intro. Oh, interesting. So he is the, the mastermind behind where the whole, all of a sudden it was like, you know what? we want to do this intro for you. Let, let us know what you think about it. And I was like, I died because I was like, you cannot listen to this being a fan in the audience and want to knock me out. <laughs> like you can't. And then to have me just like kind of parading around, you can't be like, dude, somebody please just like body slam the hell out of her, you know? <laughs> totally. And so I was like, this is so perfect for my character. It's like crazy. So the fact that I had that and then to bring it back out on, um, on TV was truly amazing. And that's why I'm like, oh, I didn't even get to really fully evolve and show its true potential yet, you know? If I recall, you didn't even get to, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but you didn't even wrestle Not with one. that character at all, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you, cause that was like shortly after the suspension happened and then you were kind of yeah. gone shortly after yep. that, right? Man, yeah. I, I'm with you, and I don't. And people are. I get shit all the time from wrestling fans because you know, they're like, "I'll like people that they don't like and yeah, stuff like that." But yeah. you can go back and look. Like I've always been an even Marie fan, so I, I'm one of those people who would like to see the comeback. I, Thank uh, you. So, okay, so Brian Kendrick, because I did want to yeah. ask you about yeah. that. You know, what was it like working with him? I mean, he seems like, like out here because he's a California guy. Yeah, yeah, I, you yeah, know, yeah. I've been to like his wrestling pro wrestling shows and okay. stuff like that. I think that's it's wrestling pro wrestling. Yes. Like, yeah. Um, and he does. He has such a good mind for the business. Um, and I think that a lot of people who were people who you know criticized you yeah. and didn't feel like you were yeah. you know had your heart in it um i feel like they didn't give you enough credit when you went back for that you know when yeah. you went to go work with brian kendrick and you were doing you know you were doing le like legit training videos and yeah. your heart was clearly into it did it bother you that people still didn't feel like you were fully into it sure i mean i also was like um i don't know what everyone is talking about i chose to like leave the main roster and go back to nxt so i'm traveling with nxt i'm setting up rings i'm putting in the so-called work so basically like back off you know <laughs> yeah, totally. um they can con continue to criticize like my character and stuff like that because that's all about it like you want someone to cheer for somebody and then you want somebody to boo for somebody and that's what makes the whole segment so exciting um but then when it was like oh she doesn't care about wrestling i'm like fuck off <laughs> like don't be mad because i got an opportunity and i'm busting my ass out here you know it's like those are the type of comments that now i, I mean like after my first i think year and a half i was laughing at like what yeah. do you mean i don't care about wrestling like totally. be quiet just because i wasn't like in on the indie circuit wrestling for years to come doesn't mean that i don't care you know mm -hmm. so. do you think you'd go back to train with him to kind of get back in ring shape and stuff with brian for sure yeah. i mean he is he is unbelievable i feel like he doesn't get enough credit to be honest like he is f awesome just from his storylines to just like his creative how to put matches together um and the flow of them and just even from his costume is just really fascinating and yeah. really cool to kind of be able to have worked with someone like that and he's super patient so like he is able the fact because wrestling is extremely hard like all the physicality and everything these guys are stone cold athletes like it is not something of course, no one's in there trying to like UFC, like trying to literally knock someone out yeah. or, you know, make someone legit tap, but it's a dance. Like you need to be able to flow and you need to be able to move with each other and take a bump and not hurt each other and not, you know, stiff somebody and not knock somebody out. Not doing all of that is an art form. So uh, Brian is able to really teach, teach that. And for him to have that ability, I don't feel like a lot of people can teach something that they're able to do yeah. also, you know? No, it's not an easy thing to, like, sometimes it's not easy to take it from here to here, you right, know? Right, 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 <laughs> right, right, exactly. So, like, for me, like, I don't think I could ever be a soccer coach <laughs> because, like, <laughs> soccer, I could play it and I could tell you, like, certain, you know, kind of where you got to be, but then to really, sh like, implement that and try to, like, teach someone is, is, would be too hard for no, me. No, it's tough. I mean, I have to do it for news, you know? Like, when I work at Team Z, I would train people sometimes, and now my site, you know, I have to train someone to kind of do the news that I, the, the way that I would like to see news. Yeah. It's hard to kind of train someone to kind of, like, become a news person. Right. But, you know, when, you, when you're someone who is passionate enough about it, I mean, you can pick it up like, like you yeah. were able to do. Yeah. Um, do you think... Do you think with Evolution coming up, like, 
you know, you mentioned, you know, the how much better it's become for everyone. Right. Um, do you think you're, I know you're not going to be in the crowd, but do yeah. you think you're watching it? I definitely, my plan is to actually watch this pay-per-view. Since I've stepped away, um, it's hard for me to watch, sit down and watch like a three-hour program. Um, but have you watched it at all? Um, you know what? No, I have not. But I have followed little snippets on, on Twitter and stuff like that. So I'm following along. So I'm not too far uh, behind. Out of the loop. Exactly. Yeah. Um, because, you know, if you ever, if everything works out, I got to be able to step back in and know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, so got to know everyone's it, name. You want to pull a Ginger Mahal <laughs> situation, oh my God. you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, for sure. <laughs> so with that, uh, I do want to watch this pay per view just because I'm, I'm really interested to see kind of the depths of like where the segments are going to go and, and, and kind of who's going to come out on top. Well, you know, it's funny. One of the things that everyone's been talking about the past week or so, and I think I heard you mention, I think I heard you talk, I, I saw you were talking about Ronda Rousey on a podcast oh, yes. recently. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I thought it was interesting a lot. There's been a lot of this discussion over the promo recently where Ronda kind of called out the Bella twins yeah. for, for their, you know, their exes or their yeah. husbands. Um, and it reminded me a lot of the AJ Lee promo. Totally. When she kind of like called all you guys out on Total Divas. Sure. And it's weird to me, like there wasn't, I don't remember there being this like big backlash of, like, oh, it was this big sexist promo, but how did you feel like being a part of that at the time? Did you feel, because you were still pretty new at the time. For there. sure. Um, at the time, I really thought that it was like, in a sense, funny, but I also was like, damn, that was a damn good promo, right? Um, and I was super new, so I didn't really take offense to anything that she was saying, but I do know that the twins really got bothered by it. And like this recent promo, I'm like, damn, Rhonda's killing it, killing it. But I also feel like it's more of a heel promo. So if anything, I'm like, twins, like step up, you guys. I wish like, I wanna be like, oh, I wanna, I wanna write your guys' like caption because they could fire back to Rhonda too, you know? And especially, um, correct me if I'm wrong, the twins are the one that did the heel turn on Rhonda. Yeah, so, yeah. so Rhonda is a baby face. Yes. So if anything, the twins should be like, hammering Rhonda. Well, it's this weird thing, because I, I agree with you. Like, they are the heels in the scenario, but they're doing this weird thing because, I mean, similar to you, like, there is this anti-Bella, sure. you know, fan base where, where sure. they, they love hating everything the, the Bellas do, and they've been waiting since the AJ Lee promo yeah. uh, to kind of have someone else say those things that they've been wanting someone to say on right. TV. And so, um, yes, in the typical like heel and face you yeah. go like well that doesn't quite make sense fully but WWE in general they've you know and you haven't been watching but even when you were there they just really you know they, they're all about shades of gray now where it's not necessarily like heel and face it's much more of like just reactions like yeah. if you get a reaction great we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna run with that. it mm -hmm. and that's similar with Becky Lynch too I mean they, yeah. they're like refusing to boo Becky Lynch no matter what she she, she mocked Edge's neck and like career ending neck injury and they're yeah. like yeah go Becky Lynch <laughs> you know yeah I think that like especially Becky Lynch is like she's just somebody that you can't turn her heel. You can't. <laughs> you can't. Like, she's just so loved by the fans. And, like, I don't feel like she has, like, any type of evil, like, persona in her body. You know? She's yeah. just such a good baby face. Yeah, I mean, yes, the cocky thing, you can tell that it's... She's she's trying to be cocky, you know? But it works for me because yeah. I'm, like... I. I am ready to see her step outside of like happy-go-lucky yes. Becky Lynch yeah. they've been doing. So yeah. at least like it's something that's a little more fresh for her character at least. For sure. Um, do you think that, you know, there was also, well, there was also like for the Battle Royal, for example, yeah. like at, at Evolution, there was like, a lot of people that were kind of felt like it was a diss against some of the women because, you know, they threw a lot of them in the Battle Royal yes. and they didn't really give them a big storyline to kind of get there. They're kind of just like, oh, we don't know what we're going to do with all these people. Let's just throw them in the Battle Royal. Yeah. Do you think that it was kind of a diss at all to them to do that? I mean, I don't really think it's a diss because ultimately every female is in this pay-per-view. So at a time that nobody was able to even think twice to even be in something like this. So in that sense, like it's not really a diss. And then it's also like, okay, so every little thing somebody's going to be upset about, like, Oh, they didn't do a, enough storyline for like these women. But it's like, dude, relax. Like there's a ton of them in this program. So be happy that you're even watching a full fledged woman pay-per-view as opposed to back in the day when you had like, um, you know, some girl just shaking her ass or her titties. So we've like, we evolved. we've evolved, <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, they can only do so much without people having so much criticism. Yes. Do storylines. Do I think that storylines, 
I looked at wrestling when I was a kid. So like I stopped watching the program for a long time. And even like it got re like surfaced, like, oh my God, this is WWE, like WWF when I got my audition for it. So I watched it way back in the day when it was WWF with like my brothers and it was like Hulk Hogan and you know, those, it was like a nasty soap opera. Oh, yeah. And it was awesome. And you were super invested in like, yeah, kick his ass. Or like, you know, and I feel like that's kind of where WWE has like mm, shifted. Because yeah. like you said, it's a lot of gray. It's a lot of gray. It's so, a lot of like, it's a lot of like uh, safe. It's very, very safe. And it exactly. didn't used to be safe at all. Right. And mm -hmm. I think also, too, there's so many, like, people are, are too scared to, like, either cut a promo or say something or look silly or be a heel and take, you know, either the criticism or whatever because everybody wants to be, like, praised and, like, yes, you are the best. You are amazing. And especially now because we have social media, you get any and every comment out there. So I think a lot of people just want to play it safe. I mean, that's gotta be hard. You know, I know I have a, f t a minor fraction fraction of the following that you have and social media gets to me like, and, I, and I'm getting better at it. I'm getting better at like, you know, ignoring every single person's comments on there and not sure. taking all of them to heart. But yeah. that's gotta be hard for you guys where you're on a global platform where, I mean, where there are people that are just hating you 24 seven. I mean, do you even, do you even look at your replies? I do. So, <laughs> so I, so when I first stepped into WWE is like when social media really, like the first time I really kind of had an account and like was really putting myself out there. And then I was like, oh my God, people are literally like, hate me. Like they're saying like, and then I was on Total Divas. So it was like, people were coming at me for no specific reason. I'm like, oh my God, they don't know me. I'm nice, I'm nice. I'm like a good person. Like this is something where I'm like, I'm playing a character and like all of these things. And like, even um, my husband too, we were both like, what in the hell is going on? Like people are coming, being, you know, saying the craziest things. So at first it really bothered me because I take pride in like how I carry myself and like being respectful to people and doing a good job and working really hard. And then having people being like, you don't care, you don't work, you don't deserve. I immediately was like, oh my God, like this is not, that's not who I am. But then thank God I have like such a smart husband. Um, <laughs> he was like, relax, like these people, they're just, they one, they don't know you. They're sitting behind a keyboard and they're watching a show that they, that is, you know, there's some dialogue on the show, whether it's Total Divas and obviously WWE, that's totally not true. And it's like, you know, elaborated times a million for entertainment. So let's keep that in mind, you yeah. know, and, and not take it too hard where you're like, oh my God, what, a, like, this is like, cause at times, yeah, it would totally ruin your day. Yeah. It would be like, what? That's yeah. like, so why are you coming for me like oh, this? People don't think, people don't expect that they're, and maybe they do and that's why they do it. But there are times where like some guy with one follower can say something that like hits you to your core, you know? Yes. And you're just yes. like, that is such a mean <laughs> thing to say to someone. Like, I try so hard, like I work all day. Like, why would you say that to me? I'm gonna read this. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. And like the best is too, like those times, and Jonathan always says it to me all the time. Like I could get so many comments of just like, um, you're amazing. I love this. I love that. And like a ton of them. Right. And then I see that one, <laughs> that one that literally rips me to shreds. And that's the one that I'm like carrying on, you know, for the rest of the day or talking about it. And I'm like, why am I allowing this? Well, and I, <laughs> I grew up like my mom's Hispanic and okay. like, she always kind of raised me to defend myself yeah. too. So I think like I've finally gotten over the like defend myself thing on yeah. social media, but it's really hard to get past that because I'm the same way as you. You're like, well, I work hard. Like I want people to like me. Yeah. You know, I want, I want like I'm doing this to entertain you, totally. not to have you hate me. You know, and so yes. it, yeah, it's it's a tough line to to you know, and it sucks because the deeper we get into social media, because I've had I think I've had a Twitter account for like ten years now. I'm yeah. sure you're probably the same yeah. way. It's gotten so much worse in the past year. It's weird, and I don't, I don't know what it is. Uh, people are just coming out of their hate shell or something, yeah. but it's weird to yeah. see like how mean it's really become. It's pretty insane, and like. It's so funny that you say like defend mode because when we first started and, and Jonathan, cause obviously he was on the total divas with me and stuff. That was his immediate rea reaction too. Is I'm, like, there with, I'm right there with you. Don't worry. <laughs> it's like, Oh really? Like running the comment back and like defend himself. But it's like trying. And now I feel like it doesn't even really bother me whatsoever. And plus I'm not in, it's funny. As soon as I stepped away from WWE, I do not get the hate really? that I used to. 
Yes. It's died down a lot. Oh my gosh, completely. So I really feel like WWE Universe has such diehard fans, which is amazing, um, that they really are the ones that are either going to love you or really, really come for you. One of the two, you know? <laughs> well, it's, the ones that really come for you also feel like, and I mean, you can't deny these, these people out there. There are people out there who do take wrestling as, as being yeah. a shoot, like it being yeah. totally real. And it surprises yeah. you because you think that most people watching are aware that this is like actors in a television show. It's written. It's written, like they like, tell you what to say, you yeah. know? And so I, it, it's funny for me too, cause like I, I think I always kept myself in my own wrestling bubble. And then when I started my wrestling site, when I started pro wrestling, she, I had to handle the social media for everything. And so I'd see those people in way more mass amount than I saw before. And it's, yeah. it's, I, I don't know how you guys do it sometimes. Like I would never be able to look at my replies. <laughs> like, <laughs> I would just say, I, I, cause I would always be in defense mode. Like that's, yeah. that's, that's gotta be hard for sure. Um, okay, so speaking of, you know, people, you know, sending you guys mean messages. I, I've been surprised to see that you guys, you and your husband have been tackling a few controversial topics on your YouTube channel oh, yeah. um, with these salty, salty Saturday yep, things. Yeah, salty Saturdays, um, yeah. Is it, I mean, do you get nervous in, you know, in today's you know, cancel culture? Right. Like that you might say something wrong when you're tackling these kinds of topics? Yes and no. So we created Salty Saturdays is one of the things. So we had Salty Saturdays before uh, I got the podcast show. And then lo and behold, it was amazing because then it's like, oh my goodness, you know, now we have kind of like two platforms that we basically are able to kind of have a narrative of talking about certain topics that are going on. And so yes, but I feel like in this culture, no matter what we say, somebody is going to have a problem with it. So as long as we are as authentic as possible, and Jonathan has zero filter. So like, I feel I've like- I've seen, I've watched, yeah, I'm aware. <laughs> I, I feel like I am a little bit nicer and kind of more reserved and Jonathan is very like okay this is it this is no bullshit this is how I think or how I feel and I think that hopefully and we don't edit it so that way like people can't be like oh you're jump cutting or you're like making yourself look like better or anything like that like you get all the likes and the ums and whatever it is or the thought process or like the moments of having to take a breath before you know all of that so that whoever is watching it is like okay this is like their real spiel this is their real like get down um and i think that is something probably hopefully refreshing to my audience about whatever topics that we do discuss you know the, totally. the very much the raw this is where it's at and this is kind of like what we think whether right wrong or indifferent at least you can kind of respect the thought behind whatever we are saying i like you guys chemistry because like you said he john will get a little more fired up about yeah. things and it'll like keep building and building and then you kind of like jump in and bring it back down yeah. and then like another topic <laughs> comes up and he gets a little more fired up and you kind of pour some water yeah. on it you know? yeah, yeah, yeah 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 exactly exactly um, so wait then your podcast do you think these are Oh, sorry about that, everyone. Uh, there is <laughs> a street a, outside. That's okay. That's also Saturdays. It was hilarious because there is literally construction going on right outside. So I was like, or Jonathan was like, oh, just in case you hear a little bit of beep, 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 beep in the background, that is why. Okay. So, well, there happening. we go. They, they followed you. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you miss being on Total Divas at all? I do. So, like, yes and no. So, right now, <laughs> not so much because like I feel like their the ratings have definitely like significantly dropped you know and I think that they're like I miss the fact of showcasing like my family on it and just like kind of showing that part of my life because I feel like my family is so big and just like so full of life like my dad it's so funny he still gets stopped to this day <laughs> of people being like oh my god Barry um, and I feel like I miss that aspect of being able to kind of like show the sides of my family and like my brothers and then um, my husband and kind of showing like our life. So of course I miss that aspect, but I definitely don't miss the pettiness and like the drama and like the, the just kind of chaotic of like girls trying to be like pecking at each other, you yeah, know? It totally I don't miss that. Do you, like, so then part of it you feel like is part of it's real. To a certain degree. To a certain degree. <laughs> and that's why that's why reality TV does so well is because like I really am married. That yeah. is that really is my dad. I really work for WWE. And like there are so many storylines that are real. Mm -hmm. And then there are so many that are just 
exaggerated. Is it similar? Like my my when I was in college, uh, my roommate Steven was on that show Laguna Beach. Okay. So um, we, we I filmed one scene with him, you okay. know, where he was like going back to Laguna Beach yeah. uh, after you know after the school year, and and we filmed the same scene like I don't know like four times, and it was kind of like hey maybe you could talk about it like this this time or like right. maybe you guys might want to discuss it. Is that kind of like the same vibe? Totally. Kinda? Yeah. Completely because then it's like. You know, I think I can't remember an episode where my parents were down and obviously my parents, they have no idea. They're just going to be like, wait, what's going on? You know? <laughs> and it's like, you get like the producers being like, okay, hey, maybe you guys want to talk about this. How do you feel about that? You know, because it has to correlate and everything has to kind of be able to transition into whatever other storyline is going on as well. So yeah, so you're getting, it's, it's not, it's reality TV, but like, you don't have the camera 24 seven and, and of course, yeah. you know, so yeah. you have to be able to, in a sense, stage certain things. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I feel like that's, and, and this is just my personal opinion as someone who's been watching total divas, you know, since it first came out, like my opinion of why it seemingly has gone down in yeah. ratings. I feel like there's, too much of the manufactured stuff the past like two seasons or so like it doesn't it hasn't felt like at least before like it like you could kind of like spend your disbelief a little bit oh, but for some sure. of the stuff that's been happening lately i'm like i know that didn't happen like i know that's not true yeah i think that is like the hardest thing too is that where i feel like why total divas was doing like so well at the beginning is because we were taking real life stuff that was going on and then just adding to it so then it was really, in a sense, authentic. Yep. You know, like Jonathan and I really got married. Like I, you know, certain things. You were actually starting with WWE for the totally. first time and going through those And I was pains. getting total like heat and I was getting like all of these certain little issues that were going on. So we were able to kind of like capture that and make it into storylines. So I do think that is super important and imperative for reality TV because the viewer can totally pick up on that. Yeah. And they can really see the, what is kind of, real and fake and people aren't dumb anymore because mm -hmm. we do have social media so they see what's going on so if if something doesn't like correlate with what's going on too on social media then it's like dude that didn't even happen totally. so you guys just totally made that up totally so then people are like no nah, i'm not watching this program anymore absolutely i think honestly the it might have helped with press but the whole like breakup between john cena and nikki bella whether it was real or not, like I think that question of whether it was real or not did kind of harm the show a little bit. It yeah. helped them with press. They obviously got tons of press out of right. it. They picked up everywhere. Yeah. But I think now people are like, mm -hmm, I don't believe what's going on there. Yeah, it's too contrived. Yeah. And it's like, um, and then all of a sudden, then you see like the shows coming out, but then you see stuff of them together, and then they're not really separate. It's just like, why even have that storyline? Why yeah. don't you just say like, we're having issues. We don't know what's going on. I don't know if me and him have a life beyond this together. Show that yep. because that's something real and something relatable. And like, we're not living in the same place anymore. Yep. Well, I'm, I'm on the West coast. He's on the East coast. We barely see each other because he's filming and all of that, like show that. That's real. That's like that's real. stuff that people that's, deal with. And that's stuff like anybody can relate to yep. that, whether they're in entertainment or not. It's just like real life situations and relationships that are going on so it's it's where the fans can really or the viewers or whatever that are fans of total divas and especially people that have watched it since season one that they can see what's really going on yeah. you know and then also too being able to follow people also from the show on social media there is like a major disconnect yeah oh yeah so then it's like okay i'm not watching this program anymore well that's a much. disconnect on raw too like when you watch it is that you see certain characters and then you see them on social media and you're like, well, why wouldn't, why wouldn't they be utilizing that personality that everyone likes on social media and, and turning them into something else? Like a Braun Strowman, for example, like right. Braun Strowman seems like the coolest guy on social media. Yes. He like shoots guns, he drinks, totally. he hangs out, yes. he parties, like he's this big, huge dude, like, like attractive women. Like yes. he's like a cool guy. Like you yeah. want to like hang out with him. But then when you're on TV, they're kind of like, it seems like they're like trying to make you dislike him so that you cheer for other people. And it's like, and I get it, you know, it's a, it's a business, it's characters on a television show, but yeah. you would think that you'd want to, with social media being such a big thing, you'd want to utilize the characters that people are following on social media. Totally. Um, do you think that, okay, so you said your family, do, do they miss being on Total Divas too? Of course, I think so. I think my dad's like a big ham. Like as much as, <laughs> as much as he like, uh, is like, oh, the cameras are coming around again. He loves it. He's like a showman. So if anything, like, I think he definitely misses it for sure because he just got such, his storylines were so great because he, good ones, yeah. he really did because that is one thing I have to give the show is that they really were able to capture 
my dad in his true self like he's just a loud <laughs> italian like says it how it is doesn't really care and just is really raw and the show really was able to capture that for him um so that was really cool so i definitely think that he misses it for sure do you is there anything like in your whole time on total divas that you wish the cameras hadn't been there for you know because i know like mm. steven for example my roommate like there was one time on an episode of laguna beach where he like screamed at his girlfriend like drunk uh. in mexico and cabo and he was always like god i wish that wasn't on there is there anything like that you got i wish the, i wish the cameras hadn't captured that so you know what for me if i because I'm super honest and open about my sobriety. And obviously in season one, I let everybody know that, that like that's where I'm at and what I do. So I honestly can say if I wasn't sober, there would probably be many moments of the show where I would be super like regretful and very much like, oh my God, I wish that did not happen. <laughs> I wish I didn't say this. I wish I didn't do that. But, but now... Um, because I was sober the entire time and everybody else around me was drinking or doing whatever. Um, I can't really recall anything where I'm like, ooh, I really wish that I did not do that. That's you know? funny that you say that. Yeah, totally, because Steven was totally drunk in Cabo. Right. When he did that. Yeah, he was wasted in Cabo yeah. when he did that. So I guess that is kind of like the people on reality shows yeah, usually it's like, ah, I was probably drunk. I was drunk. Right, like, <laughs> that was pretty like dicey. I wish I really like, definitely could have, you know, not had that extra tequila shot, you know? <laughs> so uh, what what should people expect from your podcast on Podcast One? It's the Natalie Eva Marie show. Yeah. What like what are you gonna I mean, you talk is it similar to the Salty Saturdays kind it's of stuff? It's very much similar to Salty Saturdays except I have guests on every single week. Um so like this week I have Lily Singh on and Lily Singh is I mean massive YouTube star. Yep. Um, I mean, I want to say that she is just catapulted into from movies to television. I mean, she was just at uh, Alicia Keys and Swiss Beats birthday party. So, that's I mean, crazy. like, that's crazy. So sitting down with people that um, can just share their experience, strength and hope of like what they're doing. I mean, she has um, this whole movement, Girl Love. So we'll talk about that and just like her create, create, creating I mean, have you ever watched her YouTube channel? I haven't. She, no. Okay, okay. But I, I'm Wait. very familiar with her. I just, it's, it's. I just haven't watched. It's it. It's insane. It's somebody that like she plays multiple different yeah, characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely reminds me of like kind of like a Martin situation, uh -huh. you know, where Martin would play like so many different characters of, yeah, of, of himself, um, and just talking about like the process and how she got into that. And we had like a meditation lady come on, and it's just like talking to so many different people of whatever expertise that they're in and just like really sharing their experience. It's kind of like a, a Joe Rogan-ish podcast mm -hmm. um, or like what we're doing too, totally. you know, sitting down and talking about just experiences and stuff like that and, and how they feel about certain things and, and kind of just like letting the world kind of in on something that is a uh, very easy breezy conversation that's great yeah no yeah. that lily sing chick she's so talented i mean i I've, I've seen like i've sat and like watched her youtube videos but i've obviously seen a ton of stuff that she does and it's, yeah those characters it's so it's, it's so impressive it is like i can't even do like an accent when i try it like no, my, I'm, I'm with you yeah my co-host jamie ivy on wrestling sheet radio he oh my god yeah he's my co-host on the oh show my goodness, no and, way. and he's so good at like impressions of wrestlers all the time like he'll drop one i'm like how did you do that oh my god he is a massive wrestling yeah, oh fan. yeah i know yeah yeah. I know Jamie from, I used to be a bottle service girl at Playhouse, so <laughs> yeah, Jamie, Jamie Jamie, and I go way back. Yeah, no, Jamie's massive wrestling fans, but 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 I'm a big wrestling fan. I can't do like on par For sure. wrestling impressions, so yeah, I mean, he doesn't always do them on the show, but it's I'm always impressed when he does them. It's first, an art. It's, for, an art, for, yeah, for it's, sure. de it's definitely an art. So the last thing I want to ask you before yeah. we're out of here, you mentioned wanting to come back. Yeah. Perfect world, dream scenario, like you get to, let's say, you get to book all like how, how would you foresee coming back to WWE? like how would you like it to all go about oh my goodness um that's tough because so there's girls right now that i would love to be like matched up against so alexa bliss fantastic i think that we'd have a fantastic program um ronda's like i feel like that's just an easy easy one um but i honestly think like probably me and the twins i feel like people have wanted to see that since season one yep of total divas so to actually really have like a dope storyline of myself and the twins um and i could i could bring like maurice to be my tag partner or something you know what i mean to make it spice it up a little bit um would be really really cool i think that would be a nice kind of 
finish for the fans too because they they wanted that so bad and they never really got to see that happen yep you know does that mean you'd want to come back uh in more of like a part-time role like to kind of come back as like a program type thing or would you are you looking for looking to come back as a more full-time okay. thing um no way it'd be part-time for sure <laughs> <laughs> I mean, anybody that knows, like, the wrestling schedule and, like, the fact that I have so many other things going. I mean, like, movie, TV, and the podcast and everything else is, like, so amazing. And then to be on the road 290 days, I feel like in a time in my life, like, I love being with my husband and just being with my family when I can. And anybody that knows the WWE um, schedule, you know it's so grueling I don't know how people do it at all. It's so difficult and just, like, not only the, the... tax it does on your body but like you miss your family a lot you miss you know thanksgiving christmas and any big things like i miss birthdays and and certain things moments that you can never get back so like i'm at a time in my life where like i really want to cherish those moments especially my nieces and nephews are so little that i want them to remember me at a younger age and not be 16 and be like oh yeah there's my aunt you know like hi <laughs> I saw her on how TV are you back in the yeah day. exactly <laughs> um so that's why like a part-time type of deal would be would be amazing would you want to go back to raw or smackdown since smackdown Ooh. was where you were at oh <laughs> I would put you on the spot. I know. You know. I don't know. Well, their new deal mm-hmm. um, now has everything kind of switched where Fridays are going to be what? SmackDown yep. and Mondays are going to stay with Raw. That's the reports right now. Yeah. Um. So that'll be interesting kind of yeah. how that works out. Um. But I don't know. I did. St- I, I left with SmackDown. Yeah. So I don't know. But Red, I feel like but SmackDown Raw- could use you more right now. Like I'm trying to think of where... Oh, but you're saying the red and the raw. Red thing. and raw, but I feel like you know I I do think SmackDown is lacking thereof. Yeah, because I feel like I'm trying to think of like where I could like yeah I'd like I'd like to see you with some of those some of those girls that were from NXT like Mandy Rose or oh yeah yeah, or yeah. Sonya Deville yeah. or Oscar yeah or yeah I I, I feel like I I'd like to see you on uh, on SmackDown. For sure, and another one would be Mandy and I would have a good program. That would be a dope program to go. And plus, we were on Total Divas for a season together, too, and it could be a clash of red and gold or something, you Does know? it surprise you to see JoJo still there, like, still part of the company? Because you guys, I mean, start at the same time. Yeah. I feel like people don't mention that enough. It's crazy. I don't either. I feel like JoJo, like, good for her. The only thing I wish that JoJo would do, the girl has an insane voice. She really does. And she is so talented that I wish that, like, she would be one of their, like, go-tos for singing the national anthem or yeah. something like that. And I know she had done it a, a couple times, but um, it is weird. It was, that wasn't that on Total um, Divas? It was, yeah. it was, it was, it was. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is interesting to kind of see how uh, she, just, like, transitioned from wrestling into just announcing now. Yeah, because it's, you know, she, for some reason, like, I, I never see her mentioned in, like, the conversation of, like, oh, people from Total Divas that are still doing stuff, you know? And it's 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 surprising to me because I'm like man she's she's toughed it out for a long time I mean totally. that's not an easy thing I mean, she's, she's been there a while now she has. that announcer position and yeah. as, you, as you know it's not an easy position no 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 no, no. <laughs> for sure so you're right she has usually kind of like left out of a total diva conversation which is interesting because she's like one of the OGs I mean she started yeah. it and that's another thing too I kind of think that total divas and this is just my opinion and I probably will get like you know a little bit of hate for it but why not I mean that's what I do. Here, yeah. That's what I do. Um, <laughs> is I really think their downfall is they kept changing the cast. I really think that they should have stuck with the, maybe not the original because of certain is- issues or whatever that were going on, but at least by season two, have something locked in yeah. and then keep it that way. Because I feel like it's really difficult for an audience to link onto somebody and then the next season they're gone. Yep. Or all of a sudden here's come somebody new. And then it's like kind of somebody trying to get used to somebody, a fresh face. And then unless their storylines are off the chain and they really make an impact, it gets boring and old. Totally. Like, who is this? Another girl. Like, well, it's kind of oh, like when they, they implanted drama. Alexa Bliss in there and you're like, they didn't really do much with her. And you're like, well, why'd you get rid of some of the other people I like that are on that season? Or like when they would get rid of Naomi for a season, you'd be like, uh, Naomi's my favorite character on the show. Right. Why would you get rid of Naomi? Right. She's like the most interesting person. Like, she's great. Yes. And I absolutely, I love her. And I like when they let her go for one of the seasons, I'm like, why on earth would they do that? Because like her dynamic with John is just like so good and refreshing and like so relatable and then had her leave for a season but then thankfully like you know they obviously realized like that was a boo-boo and brought her back but then they like implemented other girls and then like they had Carmella and they had um 
Alexa, and then they took him off yep. for this one. So Which it's was like, so random. Like it was like they brought him on for a season, didn't really do much with them, and then they got him. They took him off, and it was like, well, what was the point of all of that? And it, right. you, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly that I think that that does kind of turn viewers off a little bit when you're like, well, wait, but the people I like, where'd they go? Uh, whatever. And then you kind of like a year passes, and then you're like, oh, it's already off my viewing schedule, and totally. it's easy to start watching other things. Instead of if the thing is, is like if they didn't want say if they didn't have those spots to fill then leave it with that like five or leave it with the four or however many that was and then their storylines would be a lot greater so that the viewer can then maybe get a little bit more attached too you know so it's just like there's been so many like in and out and in and out i think there's only like four of them that really have been like steady yeah it's like the bell twins natty, the natty. and trin yeah that's about it yeah that makes sense yeah no yeah I, I i'm with you on that i wish that they would uh Stop switching it up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm completely with you on that. It confuses right. people. What? It confuses people. It really does. Like, and I, 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 I really like Total Divas, so I don't, <laughs> I get scared seeing the ratings go down because yeah. I'm like, oh, I don't want it to go away. And you know what? I actually had no idea because I haven't watched the show since I left. Um, shockingly, right? That sounds so like, <laughs> no, that's crazy. Not that, no, that's um, not shocking. I haven't watched TMZ <laughs> once since I left TMZ. I'm the same okay, way. Okay, it's, okay. It's, it's like it's a shell shock thing. Like, yeah. you don't, you like, when you finally get removed from it, totally. it's hard to go back and watch it. For sure. Um, and somebody told tweeted me this like of course obs crazy t the tweet right it was like aren't you so glad that you're not even on this show anymore and I was like what oh my god what do you mean and then I clicked on the the link and then obviously that's when I saw the ratings and I was like oh wow they definitely dropped significantly do you want to go back total divas if you if you were to go back like if you were to go back if you were to get back in the company fold would you want to be on total divas again <sighs> I don't know. I mean, yes and no. Yes, in the sense of like, as long as I have like creative control over my storylines, then yes, because I think it does so well. Like it's such a good platform for WWE because it brings such a different demographic and people to like really into the program and oh, yeah. want to tune in. Like I've had so many guys come up to me and be like, oh my God, thank you for Total Divas because now my wife or my girlfriend will watch Raw or Smack or SmackDown with me and has like really opened up that door. Yep. And I think that's fascinating and fantastic because that's the whole point of it. Like being on the E network and being on this channel is to really get a whole new fan base into wrestling and, and like having it, this is cool. This is like awesome. It's a awesome soap opera that you guys can follow. And that's where I think the storylines for WWE really need to like get a little bit better so that when people are watching the show, they see us the soap opera. Like yep. it is about the wrestling. It is about the moves. It is about um, putting on a show, but it's also about the promos and the storyline and really connecting these characters so that people are in the audience or watching at home are like, oh yeah, did you see Eva Marie tonight? I hope she gets knocked out. <laughs> did you see what she did backstage? It was ridiculous. She took all those girls like whatever, you know? Well, something. that's when it's best. You yeah. know, that's when it's best when there's something that people can discuss. Yeah. When it has exactly. a sense of realism to yes. it when there is a soap opera element to yes. it. I mean, the you know, I, I love wrestling. I love the yeah. matches and stuff. But the things that stay in my memory personally forever are like the huge, you know, these big storylines, the things that you like, scenes, backstage segments, scenarios, right. promos that yes. like, I'll never forget. You yes. know, like wrestling matches, obviously there's wrestling matches I'll never forget, but of I'm course. a TV fan at the end of the day. And it's a TV show. So yes. I like when those kinds of things happen. And, I, and I'm with you. You know, it bothers me when people talk about Total Divas and they they act like it didn't bring a new audience to the to the to WWE. You yeah. know, and it, and it drives me crazy because like like you said, you know, my girlfriend when I first started when we first started dating, I tried to get her to watch it. She was like, ah, oh, it sounds stupid. It sounds totally. stupid. And then one day she was homesick from work and it was the only thing on the DVR. Yep. And she was like, okay, whatever, I'll watch it. Yeah. She watched every episode, binged watch it, yep. hooked. She now every time it's on the DVR, it's like, oh, let's watch Total Divas. Yep. So 100. percent And girls I worked with, you know, there's there's so many women that I worked with at T. TMZ that would scoff at wrestling, and then once Total Divas came totally. out, they were like, "Oh, I'm watching this. I, I kind of like this. You know, this is pretty cool." So, I, yeah, it, I mean, even even my website, uh, two of the women that I had writing for my site at different points yeah. in time, both of them started watching wrestling because of Total Divas. Got them into pro wrestling. Totally. They, they, they liked wrestling so much they so, they wanted to start writing about it. So, yeah. so yeah, I mean, I, I I wish more people would give credit to Total Divas in terms of bringing a female audience because I mean, like. I like watching wrestling with other women too. Like it doesn't <laughs> yeah. have to just be guys. No, exactly. And that's where I think like Total Divas really did such a good like bravo to Vince wanting to like, do this show because it really showcases women doing 
this badass sport, but also struggling doing it too, you know? And it brings this like realness element into being on the road, trying to get the storylines, trying to get TV times, because obviously at the time when Totally Divas first started, there was so much lack thereof, you know? It was very much like maybe a two minute segment, oh, if yeah. that. And my, I think my first, the first um, season, you got, you get to see the twins and it was the Funkadactyls. Their match got cut, cut at WrestleMania. Classic Total Divas episode. Right? And yeah. it was totally something that is just a, a natural occurrence at the time because the women weren't really looked to as like, mm, not that important. We can, we can just kind of cut this and it won't really matter. And now, um, I don't really think that would even be, it would be like, um, you know, in the, in the ear monitor to the ref, like you speed this up because we need like, go home, go home, yep. go home, go home. I know? remember there was like, a, there was some WrestleMania match, I want to say like two years ago. I think it was a battle royal and it almost got cut from the show for time. And I remember like, people were like, there's not a lot of time left on this show. They're going to cut the win. Everyone was like freaking out about it and stuff. So yeah, I mean, that doesn't happen anymore as much. I mean, it probably still happens a yeah, little yeah, bit, yeah. But, but as much. So yeah, I'm with you in that regard. It's nice to see that. It's nice to see the change. Cause I mean, like, you know, I mean, Total Divas and you know everything that went on in NXT did help make that change happen, and, I, and I'm oh, happy for about sure. it. sure. Yeah, no, definitely. So, all right. So, title run. That's the next thing. That's that's the next thing you want. That's the next thing. Yeah. You foresee. Definitely. <laughs> all right. Well, I like that. <laughs> uh, where people find you and everything that you're doing? Everything is Natalie Eva Marie on all social media platforms, from Twitter to Facebook to YouTube, and. Definitely tune in to uh, the Podcast One, and you can get that on Podcast One app, podcastone.com, Google Play, wherever people get their podcasts, and it's the Natalie Eva Marie Show. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here, and thank, thank you guys you. for thank watching you. and listening. Uh, make sure you guys check out the podcast, and make sure you guys keep an eye out yes. for the return of Eva Marie, apparently. That's right. Uh, all right. Well, thank you so much, guys. Pro Wrestling Sheet.com.